I have a lot to say about this. And this is not to be confrontational with anybody. This is not to say anybody's right, anybody's wrong. This is just my very, very strong opinion, right? So for those of you who are aware, Bleacher Report predicted that the Pistons are going to win 24 games next year. They have us going 24 and 58, right? If that happens, that will be a 10 game increase over last season, right? Well, yeah, that's good, right? 10 game increase is good. Yeah, 10 game increase can be good depending on where you were. And that's kind of what I'm getting at. Me personally, guys, I am not going to be satisfied if we only win 24 games next year. To me, that will be a failure of a season. If that happens, that's a failure. And for me, guys, there are a ton of reasons why I feel that way, but I'm going to focus on just a few because this was not planned, but I saw Twitter going crazy. Um, I talked to a few people about it, people that I'm cool with, talked about it. Um, had difference of opinion, which is cool, no problem, right? But I want to give my opinion on what I think. And so that's what I'm going to do. So let's start by saying this. Corey Woods, right, beat writer, shout out Corey Woods. He interviewed Isaiah Thomas about a month and a half ago. And he asked him that same exact question. If he thought that the Pistons could win 25 games next season with all the roster construction that's been done and also the overhaul of the front office. And Isaiah said that he was very disappointed that the bar has fallen so far that the progression for next season is 25 games. And I could not agree more. So many Pistons fans have lowered their bar, to, in my opinion, to a disappointing level. And it's, it's ridiculous. Maybe that's because I was around when the Pistons were winning, when they were going to the conference finals every single year, when they won in 2004, went to the finals 2005, Eastern Conference Finals for the next four years or three years. You know, I, I was there when they won back to back with the bad boys, right? I was young, but I remember it. I was, so I've been around for all three championships, but that was a standard. I can hear it now and I already hear it. I, I can already hear the chat. I can already hear the chat. Not even, maybe not the chat, but I can hear everybody else saying, Deuce, you gotta stop living in the past, bro. Stop living in the past, man. That was 20 years ago. That was 30 years ago. Okay. But think about this. The teams that the Pistons were battling with in the 80s, right? The Celtics, the Lakers, right? Those teams to this day have still maintained that standard ever since. Even if they weren't making the playoffs every year, even if they weren't reaching that standard, that was the standard. I'll give you some examples. When the Lakers, right? When they were losing in the early 2000s, when Shaq left, right? When we broke that team up in 2004 off season, Lakers fans were disgusted with that team because they were missing the playoffs year after year after year because of their standard. Their standard was winning. Go back even further. Or go actually jump ahead. When they were when they were missing playoffs in the 2010s, when Lonzo Ball was there, when Brandon Ingram was there. Even further back when, when Swaggy P was there and Jordan Clarkson and all these guys were there, right? Do you guys remember that post-game interview when they won that game and they were hooting and hollering about winning that game? And Kobe Bryant, I think he was on, I forgot which uh, late night show he was on, but he was on a late night show and he hadn't seen this clip. I think he was injured, so he hadn't seen the clip. I think it was Jimmy Kimmel. It was the Jimmy Kimmel live show. And he showed Kobe that clip. And Kobe literally just sat there like this. He was disgusted. He was disgusted. You know why? Because that's not their standard. That's what I'm saying. Our standard as Pistons fans, as an organization, has dramatically changed over the years. Pistons former owner, Bill Davidson, right? He had a standard. That standard was competing for the playoffs, bare minimum. It was really contending for championships, if we're being honest, right? But his standard was minimum playoff contention and then see what happens when we get there. Maybe we can push, maybe we get hot late. Maybe we have a great second half of the season after All-Star game, post All-Star break, and we can catch fire late. But the bar was always playoffs, always, always. So when he passed away, God rest his soul, that standard changed. In no way, in no way, shape or form, should anybody use a season where you lose 27 games in a row you only win one out of every six games, basically. That should never be acceptable. And you should never use that as a baseline. Let me ask you a question. Do you guys think if we win 25 games by the end of next season, that Cade Cunningham is gonna be content with that? 
You think he's going to be content with that? Or do you think he would even view that as a successful season? After signing an extension to stay here for multiple years? I got another question for you. If I told you that Kate Cunningham four years ago, y'all get me fired up. If you told Kate four years ago, right? You tell Kate in 2021, we're going to 2025 season now, right? If you told him in the 2021 season that this team would only have one more win from that season compared to this one in 2025, you think he'd be like, oh yeah, that's, that's what's up. Yeah, for sure. I'm happy with that. You think he'd accept that? He wouldn't believe it. Let alone accept it. He wouldn't believe it. And here's how I can virtually guarantee you that he wouldn't. Here's a stat for you. When Kay played with the Oklahoma State Cowboys in college, right? As a freshman, in his lone season, they went 19 and 8. I'm going to say it again. When he played for Oklahoma State in college, as a freshman, in his lone season, they won 19 games out of 27. I understand college is different, but follow me. Kay Cunningham won five more games as a freshman in college than he did last season with the Pistons. Playing a third of the games. 27 games. That's a third. 27. Times two is 54. Times three is 81. Add one more, you're at 82. A third of the games. He won five more at college than he did with the Pistons last season. What are we talking about? You can't just look at the jump and win total and use that as your barometer. You got to look at how many games you actually won. If we went 0 and 82 last year, I know it's a stretch, but just follow me. If we went 0 and 82 last year, would a 10 game jump be an improvement? Oh, we're 10 and 72 this year. No, I understand we didn't win zero games, but we only won 14 more than zero. <laughs> I could even understand if we had the same roster from last season and there was no turnover whatsoever, right? If we had no turnover, we brought the same team back, the same guys back, the same coach back, the same front office back. I could see that you think a 10 game increase would be a progression, even if we did only win 14 games, right? I could see that because you might think, okay, with a little internal growth, maybe they understand Monty Williams system better. Maybe guys are more committed. Maybe Monty Williams stops benching Jaden Ivey. Maybe he gets his act together, right? If that was the case, then I could see people saying a 10 game jump is still progress from 14 because it's still 14 with no roster con construction no roster changes no front office changes no coaching changes i'm still expecting a 10 game jump from 14. everybody is excited about this team right now right why why is everybody excited right now about this team because we actually have a much better constructed roger thank you trajan we have more spacing for k cunningham thank you trajan we have veteran leaders who can actually produce on the court thank you trajan we have much more talent overall than we did last season. Thank you, Trajan. And we don't have a coach who's going to sit one of your best players for a guy who couldn't even make his own national team and just sign with the Brooklyn Nets. Thank you, Trajan. We're excited about all that, right? For a 25-win season. We're so used to losing. It doesn't even affect fans anymore. Fans are just numb. I get it. A 27 game losing streak can do that to you. We lost 68 games last year, y'all. We lost, I'm gonna say it again. We lost 68 times last year. All of our beat writers, content creators, everybody, we had to, if, if we're really committed, we had to create 60, either 68 articles or 68 videos minimum about why we lost. Trying to put a different spin on it as, as to why we lost. It felt like deja vu Groundhog Day every single time the Pistons played damn near. It felt like GMAC, for those who like GMAC Cash, it felt like GMAC Cash. He might as well wrote a song. You know, the Pistons lost again. Yeah, you know, the Pistons lost again. Yeah, you know, the Pistons lost again. That's how I felt. If you never experienced a winning franchise, it's hard to know what it feels like to have a winning one. Just ask Lion fans. Lions fans are losing their mind right now. Why? Because we're as good as we've ever been. What's that mean? We've been terrible every other time. Except for the couple years, the Barry era, when we got to a playoff game, we beat the Cowboys, right? And then a few years ago, when we lost to the Cowboys, played them again, the Pettigrew flag, they, they called and then picked it up that game. 
that was really the last time that we've been good. And honestly, this team now is better than both of those teams. So Lions fans are losing their mind right now. They were so used to losing. They don't know what to do when they're winning. So what's that mean? When you're losing, you also don't know what to do when you're losing. What are we doing, man? I don't care, bro. Like, for those of us who remember what a winning team looks like, we will never accept a 25-1 season as a progression. And I don't care how many games we have won or lost the previous season. It does not matter. I don't accept it. And neither should you. Be Trevor's everybody. I'm out. Let's go. Dress up, bless up, step up and get it. Lace up, face up, I'm here to win it. It's for my city and the team coming with me. Headed for the championship, even if the road is long. Legends pay the way for us. Legends see nothing in this world can take it from us.